So Harold, um, to get started, and uh, you know, you've done so much in this field, and you've taught so many different folks. And you know what makes you really unique um, is you are not only a dermatological surgeon, but uh, you have really, really sort of pioneered uh, a lot of the early detection technology. Um, and just sort of talk about a little bit about what type of tools that you use at this point, technology that you use uh, that help you to detect melanoma skin cancer at a very early stage? So the most important tool is my eye. I evaluate patients clinically with visual inspection, but unfortunately my eye is not so good. And when I have a pigmented lesion, which is either an atypical mole or perhaps even early melanoma, my accuracy is about 60%, which is like going to Las Vegas to play blackjack. So over the years, we've used other tools. Uh, the most important tool we use is called a dermatoscope. It's our stethoscope of the skin. It's a handheld microscope. And when you place alcohol on the skin and you place this scope on the skin, you can see patterns that you can't see with your eye. And these patterns can be seen not only in the epidermis, but also at the dermal epidermal junction. And based on these patterns, our 60% now goes to about 80%. So now I have a chance to beat the Las Vegas card players. Um, well, uh, I think, I think you're being modest. I think, uh, um, I think, you know, I would say, I mean, I, I agree with you. Some of the study have shown that just by clinical examination alone, the dermatologist accuracy is about 64%. So uh, you bumped it up to 80%. So your odds is a little bit better. What else do you use? We use another instrument called the confocal microscope. It's a much larger instrument. It's actually a laser beam, which when it hits the skin gets reflected back into a computer screen where you see the layers of the skin live. It's almost like virtual pathology. When I send tissue to the pathologist, that is to do a biopsy, and I'm concerned that it might be a skin cancer, a melanoma, he actually only looks at about 2% of the lesion. With confocal microscopy, we're looking at 100% of the lesion. We're looking at it in a different plane. When it, it sends the pathologist, he looks at it in a vertical plane, whereas we look at it in a horizontal plane. And the accuracy is quite good. It bumps my 80% up into the 90s and is another tool which we use. The main problem with the confocal microscope is it's a relatively larger machine. It's difficult to get in certain areas as well as it's time consuming. It takes a good 15 to 20 to 25 minutes to evaluate a single lesion. That's so a long time. It is a long time. But for selective lesions, in my opinion, it's it's the Rolls Royce. So where would you use, I mean, I know, I think for those out there who do not know about you, uh, you've been doing dermoscopy, you taught all those people about dermoscopy around the world and you run all those textbooks. For you to come out to say, you know, dermoscopy is not good enough and you use confocal laser microscopy, but where would you use it? I mean, how do you deploy this in your clinical practice? So in my opinion, the best usage is for isolated pigment lesions on the face. I agree. Yeah. That is, we know that for a lesion, which is a brown flat patch, we have a differential clinically. Uh, the differential includes a lentigo, a sebri keratosis, a pigmented actinic keratosis, a lichen planus like keratosis, and then melanoma on sun damaged skin. And with the dermatoscope, we can always bring it down to maybe two or three diagnoses. Our differential diagnosis with the dermatoscope is usually between a pigmented actinic keratosis and a melanoma in situ. With confocal microscopy, it's a real game changer. That is, we can make a diagnosis almost all the time for these melanomas on sun damaged skin with the confocal microscope. The other use of the, the confocal micro microscope for pigmented lesions, particularly melanomas, are when you have equivocal lesions, you're not sure it's whether it's just an atypical mole, a congenital mole with unusual features, versus a melanoma, 
Well, there are patterns that we can see with confocal, which help us distinguish the two. And in those instances, it's quite useful. Confocal is also useful not only for melanomas, but for other neoplasms of the skin, for basal cell carcinomas, for squamous cell carcinomas. So it's a very useful tool for selective lesions and in selective locations. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the challenges you mentioned, not only it takes a long time and it's expensive, um, and um, and plus, you know, uh, you really have to know how to use it, right? Just like dermoscopy, if someone just picked up the dermoscope, didn't really know how to use it, the diagnostic accuracy actually goes down. Uh, but you, I, I would imagine confocal laser microscopy is the same thing, basically. It is. I mean, the, the language, it's a specific language. And once you learn the language, it's actually easier than dermoscopy because huh. there are fewer things that you have to know. Yeah, no, I agree with you, especially on the facial lesions, especially for looking at lenticle malignant. It's very, very useful. And that also, this is a really great place because most people don't want to have a biopsy on the face if they can avoid it. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I know at one point that you use a lot of total body photography. How does that come into play? And like in what selected patient do you use total body photography? So we use full body photography for individuals who have numerous moles of different sizes and shape, who also have a history of melanoma. We, we use it for individuals who are concerned that they're gonna get another melanoma. And basically I try to explain to the patient that some people need family albums, other people need mole albums. So the use of a the use of a full body photography is just a baseline. So when a patient comes back in, if he's concerned about a particular spot, and I now have used dermoscopy, and I can tell the patient it looks fine, but let's go back to your baseline set of photographs to see if there's really been a change. We also use it the same way that if there's something that concerns me. I now have a baseline to compare it to. And that's the main use of full body photography for me. I don't image every single lesion with dermoscopy, which is called mole mapping. We might do selective lesions. So the way we normally use full body photography is for high risk patients, patients who are concerned, patients who have lots of moles of different sizes and shape, and patients who sometimes just need a little extra in terms of uh, making them feel comfortable. Uh, who are those patients? Do you have any criteria, like number of moles or history of melanomas or? History of melanoma is, is, is one of the most important uh, reasons why we do full body photography. Uh, individuals who have lots of moles of different sizes and shape. Uh, lesions that I have trouble with in terms of when I'm looking at them uh, and say, there are many of these nevi which concern me. And rather than uh, do uh, a biopsy, uh, it's better just to follow these both with our clinical exam, full body photography, as well as with dermoscopy. I'm like gonna I'm gonna pin you down a little bit because all this you know the audience we have a general public and you say you got a lot of moles. Do you have a number that you cut off? I say 30, 40, 50, 100. What's is there a number? Sure. Um, so there really isn't a number because if I have a patient who has hundreds of small moles that look all normal in their size, shape, and color, I wouldn't do full body photography. Okay. If I have a patient who has many moles greater than 30 moles and the moles are of all different types of patterns, that is an individual who I might consider using full body photography. You know, most individuals have what we call signature nevi. That is, their nevi patterns, even with their, our eye, they look similar. So we look for outliers. Now, if someone has three or four patterns that are all outliers, these are individuals who are best followed with full body photography. Yeah, that makes that makes perfect sense. I do the same, obviously. I, um, no. When you, I'm going to push you a little bit. So you already sort of alluded to it a little bit. When you say patterns, do you mean the clinical patterns or do you mean the dermoscopy pattern, that this pattern that you see in the dermoscope? Both. Both. That okay. is, yeah. So there are individuals who have flat pigmented lesions and that's their pattern. Okay. There are individuals who have lesions that are raised and mammillated. That is, they have a pebbly surface. It's a different pattern. Those are the patterns we see 
uh, with congenital nevi or moles of birth or nevi with congenital like features. We have individuals who have patterns where many of their moles have asymmetry and irregular borders, but many of their lesions have this pattern as opposed to one specific lesion. So we look at the patterns clinically, and then we look at the patterns dermoscopically. And the patterns dermoscopically as well, most individuals have signature patterns with dermoscopy, and we look for outliers with those as well.